Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gospel Minute Live. I'm Steve Toby, and today is the second day of October, and it's the feast day of the holy Hiram martyr Cyprian and the virgin martyr Justina. St. Justina, who was from Damascus, lived in virginity for the sake of Christ. St. Cyprian, who was from Antioch, began as an initiate of magic and a worshiper of the demons. A certain foolish young man who had been smitten with Justina's beauty, hired Cyprian to draw her love to him. When Cyprian had wed every demonic device he knew and had failed, being repulsed by the power of Christ whom Ju Justina invoked, he understood the weakness of the demons and came, came to know the truth. Delivered from demonic delusion, he came to Christ and burned all of, all of his books on magic, was baptized and later ascended the Episcopal throne in his country. Later, he and Justina were arrested by the Count of Damascus, and having endured many torments at his hands, they were sent finally to Diocletian and Nicomedia, where they were beheaded about the year 304, and the Apolitikion for the martyrs Cyprian and Justina, as a share of the ways and a successor to the throne of the apostles, O inspired of God, Thou foundest discipline to be a means of assent to divine vision. Wherefore, having rightly divided the word of truth, thou didst also contest for the faith even unto blood. O Hieromater Cyprian, intercede with Christ our God, that our souls be saved. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you all. And... We got to say a happy birthday to Catherine Houston. And maybe we can get Kurt to sing her happy birthday. I won't put you through my rendition of it. And let me see, up here, right there, I mentioned it the other night, maybe it was last night, that that is the uh, icon of the Theotokos and the burning bush. And uh, jo uh, Joseph Khalil brought that up, mentioned that icon, so I found it and put it up there. So there we go. Well, let's go to uh, Kurt, Kurt Lytle, and he'll say our, read us our evening scriptures. Kurt, it's all up to you now. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Good, evening, Good evening, everyone. everyone. Let, us Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, Master who loves us mankind, mankind, with the pure, pure light of the divine, divine knowledge. knowledge. Open, Open the eyes of our mind, mind to the understanding of thy gospel, gospel teachings. Implant also in us the fear of thy blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter in upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy Father who is from everlasting, and thine all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our psalm for this evening, Psalm number 121, it can be found at the top, uh, well, on the bottom right-hand column of page 766 in your Orthodox Study Bible. If you're following along with the Protestant Bible, please uh, refer to Psalm number 122. Uh, the notes for this psalm, again, are uh, found at the bottom of that page and uh, are consistent through Psalm number 119 through 133. I won't read them again tonight, but uh, you can find notes on these Psalms there. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet stand in your courts, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city whose compactness is complete. There the tribes went up, the tribes of the Lord, a testimony to Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For thrones sat there for judgment, thrones over the house of David. Ask now for things regarding the peace of Jerusalem, and there is prosperity for those who love you. Let there now be peace in your power and prosperity in your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and neighbors, I indeed spoke peace concerning you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I sought good things for you. 
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our epistle for this evening is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. You can find them on page 1633 and 34 of your Orthodox Study Bible. Um, I wanted to do something I normally don't do with the epistle and, and read the notes real quick. Um, Paul, as a former rebel toward God and a persecutor of the church, uh, noted in Acts 9, 1 through 3, uh, gives glory to God for his calling as an apostle. Throughout the Old and the New Testament, our church and our church history, the greatest sinners have often become the most notable saints. Examples are Moses, Rahab, David, Photini, the woman at the well, Matthew, Paul, and St. Mary of Egypt. Verses 12 through 17. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into a ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant, and with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, the uh, gospel for this evening will be familiar. It's uh, once again, chapter 6 uh, of Luke, verses 17 through 23. It's on page 1375 of your Orthodox Study Bibles. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits. And they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him, and he healed them all. Then he lifted up his eyes towards, the, towards his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in a like manner their fathers did to the prophets. The word of the Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, there's a couple of things here that interest me. It doesn't take much to interest me. Um, <coughs> Paul says, uh, now, though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him, that's Christ Jesus, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly and in unbelief. We have a just God, and he understands. He understands that some people are just ignorant. They don't know. That's what Paul means here. He doesn't mean they're stupid by ignorant, but they, they don't know Christ. And that's what gives me hope for all those unbelievers out there, that they're acting um, out of uh, a lack of knowledge. That's a better word, out of a lack of knowledge. And uh, Paul also mentions over in Romans, you know, that uh, those Gentiles, those pagans, you know, they're a law unto themselves who have not heard the word of God, who have not heard of Christ. They're a law unto themselves. And... Uh, so we have every, every hope, my friends, that uh, even those who have not heard the gospel uh, can be saved. 
they can be saved. Amen. And now there was something here in the gospel. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are, blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. We had that question on Wednesday. How do we control our anger you know, when we're being persecuted for our faith. What does Jesus say? Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. You know, so we have persecutions going on throughout the world for, against Christians. Well, should they be angry and depressed? No. No. Jesus says rejoice. Rejoice because of that. Because you're receiving a great reward in heaven. Now, all he promised for us here on earth was persecution and being reviled and casting our names out as being evil. Well, well through, because of him. And uh, so we rejoice. So somebody looks at you and says, oh, there goes that holy roller. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs> all righty. Well, um, a little pressed for time this evening, and I didn't really thoroughly prepare for this evening, but we'll get through it. Tonight we're going to read about the crucifixion of Christ. And we're going to do this in two or three parts, um, because there's so much entailed in that. Uh, we'll read the text tonight from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If we, I'm sure we'll, we'll take the time to read the text. And uh, then in the following evenings, not... Tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night we'll uh, go over some of the ramifications uh, of the of the crucifixion, and uh, there's going to be discrepancies as we go through these uh, gospels. You know, one evangelist will say one thing, and one will say something differently. Be uh, one of the big discrepancies that people will point out is the times that the apostles give, the evangelists give. They don't match up. Well, seemingly they don't match up, but we'll explore that too. You know, there's uh, a lot of people, unbelievers, who, and, and, uh, uh, who say, well, that can't be true. Because look at these times. They're all different. They're all different. Well, they appear to be different, but they're not really different. But we'll, we'll explore that. And uh, so you'll know how to answer those questions when, uh, when they come up to you. But before we do all that, Kurt and I want to say hello to everybody. We want to say hello to Joni Milliburn. Good evening to you out in California. And Bernie is back. Bernie Grant, I'm back. Good evening to everyone. Good to have you back, Bernie. We've been praying for you, your family, your mother, and that you get back to work real soon. We've been praying for that. And Violetta's here. Rob King, good evening, everyone. Christopher Bundros, Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. Happy birthday to Catherine Houston. Amen. Happy birthday. Another year younger. That's, that's the way I look at it. <laughs> Kurt's laughing. I told him that, you know, I've gotten so old that I see no real advantage of getting older and older. So I've decided back. to yeah. go back. Go back. Take the years <laughs> off instead of adding them on. Okay. Oh, Anna, good evening to you. Thanks be to God for all his guidance and care. It's been a busy and a hard week, but by God's mercy, everything went well. Good to hear that, oh, Anna. Good to see you. Joe Barbera, good evening all. Joe Barbera is here with you. Usually he's only here in spirit in the mornings. He's at work, but he he checks in and says, I'm, I'm here with you in spirit. That's in the mornings. Now over here, of course, we have a full house. Wilson Salviejo, Robin Armstrong, becoming quite the regular. Good to see you. Kurt and I were commenting on that earlier. And let me see here. Debbie Owens, good evening to you, Deb. We've been praying for you and your family. And for a little less stress in your life, both at work and at home. Ruthie Johnson, good evening from Kentucky. Cool evening with the crickets chirping. Beautiful music. Now, Ruthie Johnson says, no skunks, 
but saw a beautiful fox yesterday. Oh, I love to watch those foxes run in the fields. Oh, it's beautiful. And in the winter time, when there's got snow on the ground, you see them diving right, diving right into the snow after mice. Beautiful to watch. Nellicott Valley, good evening to you. Father Antipas, good evening to you, my beloved brothers and sisters. I thank you all for your prayers, encouragement, and support. Glory be to Christ our God. Amen. Well, Father, I know you've got to start that school all over again. So, so much effort and just gone away. So, but it's not gone away, Father. It's not gone away. Still got it here. Still got it here. You can take, persevere, as Christ would say. Marianne Russell, David Fox, good evening. And let me see here. Jay Russell. Sharon Toby, good evening. Gorgeous moon out tonight. Max is hunting and one skunk. Tonight our population has gone down. Remember to pray for the President and First Lady. We will do that in a few minutes. Joseph Khalil, I love this. O oh Lord, you magnified your people and honored them and did not despise them, but at every time and in every place you assisted them. That's what he's here for. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you magnified your people and honored them and did not despise them. But at every time and every place you assisted them. Wisdom, chapter 19. Joseph adds, may you always be safe. Amen. And here's our prayer. Kurt, can you see that prayer from Jay Russell there? No. No? Okay. He's on Facebook. Yeah, I'm looking okay. at it. Okay. Well, I was going to have you read it, but I'll read it. Okay. Lord, we ask for your blessings and for protection for all people of the world. Please end all violence, amen, and strife, and replace them with your love, mercy, wisdom, and especially with your peace. Lord, have mercy. God bless. God bless America. Amen. Yeah, we need peace, dear Lord. We need peace in our country. We need peace in our homes. We need peace in our own personal lives. And we find that peace through you, Lord. We find it through you. Lena May, good evening to you. And, okay. But, well, this ought to be interesting. Christina Hunter, good evening, everyone. I'm so happy to have seen another day and so grateful for our Lord's love and mercy for us. What I am about to say may feel to some that it should not belong here, but I'm going to say it anyways, regardless to what political party you might place your preference in, and I'm not into politics so much, we need to see God's image and love in each other and every one of us. Never should someone's suffering make us happy or believe they deserve pain or illness because we don't like their action or leading abilities. Let's pray for both Trump's and Biden's health and wisdom to keep their eyes and hearts on our Lord. Oh, I'm glad you put that in there. I'm glad, yes. Kurt's making the sign of the cross. That's how much it impacted him. Me too. You know, when I look at someone, when I look at someone, I see the image and likeness of God, just like God, you know, <laughs> God said in Genesis, let us make man in our image and our image and likeness. We're all made in the image and likeness of God. In uh, Leviticus or Deuteronomy, I, I, can, I always get them confused. You know, we're told to love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus repeated that in Matthew 22. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we may not agree with them. We may not agree with their politics. We may not believe, uh, agree with their beliefs. But we still love them. We still have to love. And uh, I know sometimes in this, in this world, it seems like everybody's working, Kurt, to drive us apart from each other instead of bringing mm -hmm. us together. The seems vibe. like that. Seems like that. And it's a damn shame. It really is. Thank you, Christina. And if 
Father Antipas, thank God for being so merciful. Thank you for reading so beautifully and the two of you to explain the scriptures for us. That's you too, Kurt. I also love the stories of our saints of the day. You know, we can learn so much from these saints. They're here for examples. That's The church has said, look, these are our saints. This is why they're our saints. These guys who suffered for Christ, just like in our gospel, just like our gospel today. Yeah, they, the only thing Christ pr promised us here on earth was a whole bunch of persecution, a whole bunch of pain for his name's sake. But as the gospel says, rejoice in that. And rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Yeah. Great examples. And you know, we pray every day, every morning and every night for a girl named Fatima Muhammad, who is a martyr, not a red martyr, but a white martyr. There's a difference. Okay? And she confesses her faith. She professes her faith in Tehran, Iran, and has been in prison for it. You know, but because she continues. And we continue to pray for her. Okay. Marsha is here, praying now for our nation to come together in kindness to each other. Amen. We join you in that prayer. And Father Antipas replying to Sharon. Thank you so much, Sharon. So glad to see you for the first time. Prayers for the president and his family and people around him. Amen. Mother Elizabeth, good evening all. Working on our school to share, to share around the globe. Tune of the day, Arensky's Children's March and Rhythm Studies to bring us together. Amen. Unity through music. And Kendra Bennett, we need to pray for everyone all of the time. And Jay Russell, amen. Lord, he's replying to Christina. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us all. Fill us with your love and peace that we may share your love with everyone. Amen. Wow. Camilla Raymond, good evening to you. Hopefully we'll see you. Kurt and I will see you on Sunday. Sunday. And Catherine. And Catherine, too. Now, normally we reserve this prayer for the morning. We say one of two prayers in the morning for the coronavirus. And I wish I could just hand this over to Kurt and he could read it. There you go. But that's not possible. But um, let's pray for, no, not this one. I want not the other one. There we go. You know, we pray for uh, relief from this pandemic every day. And now with our president and first lady um, getting this disease, testing positive for the coronavirus, um, of course, we have more focus now on it, which is a shame because we should be more focused day and night, praying for everyone who has or has had this disease or will have this disease. So let's pray. Let's pray for just a few minutes here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Most merciful and triune God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, and thou caregivers with compassion and generosity, bring healing to all those who are ill, all of those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk, give comfort to those who have lost a loved one, welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities, unite us, unite us in our compassion, Lord. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. For Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. Okay. We said hello to everybody, I think. And Camilla says, yes, she'll be here Sunday evening. Wonderful. Okay. So the topic this evening, we've gone through... Um, the trials before the Sanhedrin. We've gone through the trial before 
uh, Pilate, and Jesus is now condemned to death. So today we're going to read, um, starting uh, in Matthew, chapter 27, verse 32. We're going to read his account of the crucifixion. Mm. So turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew, chapter 27, verse 32. Page 1325 in your Orthodox Study Bible. Thank you. Why don't you read it for us? Okay, how far do you want to go? I'll stop you. Oh, okay. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, uh, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called, called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and from my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and the other on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed, blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, also mocking with the scribes and the elders, said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him in the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let's stop there right for just a second. Okay. Okay, that's from uh, Psalm 21 in the uh, Septuagint, I believe. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let me double check that. 21. Uh, yep. Oh, God, my God, hear me. Why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Psalm 21 in the Septuagint. Page 694. Yeah, you know, tomorrow, let's, let's make that our psalm. Psalm 21 for tomorrow night. Okay. Because that's all about the crucifixion. It's all about the crucifixion. It's so prophetic. It's one of those prophetic psalms. So go ahead. Continue on. Okay. Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his, yielded up his spirit. Then behold... The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Thank you. Now, um, the veil was torn in half. Okay, There was a veil between um, the altar and the Holy of Holies. That's the veil that was torn in half. That veil separated man from God. With the tearing of that, of that 
veil. There was no longer that separation between God and man. Also, also oh, go ahead. I was going to say tradition has it that the uh, Theotokos actually made the veil. That's right. Exactly right. We read that in the Proto-Evangelium of James. Good. Now, Kurt, let's turn over to uh, St. Mark. That's page 1355. And we'll pick it up at verse 21. Chapter 15. Chapter 15 of St. Mark. Okay. Verse 21. Got it. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Important name, by the way. Rufus comes up in the uh, uh, letter of uh, St. Paul to the Romans. And he mentions, say hello to Rufus. Hmm. We believe it's, okay, we believe it's this Rufus. Go ahead. As he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought it up to they brought him up to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. And we'll be reading about that tomorrow night in Psalm twenty one. Now it was the third hour and they crucified him, and the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. Now I want you to remember that it's the third hour of the day that they crucified him. Nine John, is, John is going to tell us a different, okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll resolve that. Go ahead. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking him themselves with scribes said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which translated as, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling on Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come down, come take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom so that when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last and said truly this man was the son of god there was also women looking on from afar among who were mary magdalene mary the mother of james and and the less and joseph and salome who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Now let's turn to Luke. <clears throat> and let me see here. Where will we pick up Luke here? Oh, uh, chapter 23, verse 26. Luke 23, 26. Twenty-six. Okay. Nope, that's twenty-two. Now, in this, we're going to see uh, some things that Luke puts in that uh, Matthew and Mark did not put in. Okay. So. Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. On him they laid the cross that he might bury it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, 
and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two other criminals who led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, If he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly for we received the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, I've had people say, this is not fair. This is not fair. Now, this man was a murderer. This man who uh, repented on the cross, he was a murderer. He uh, led a rebellion. And uh, at the last minute, he gets salvation. Now, we have people who worked all, all their lives towards salvation. All their lives. And he gets it at the last minute. Well, Jesus prepared, prepared us for this hour, this moment. The parable. Would you care to? Well, it's the, the, the parable where he hired workers uh, all day long as they went through the day, and he paid at the end everyone the same amount. Right. Exactly. He prepared us for this. You know, now someone said, well, you mean all I got to do is sit back and uh, repent at the last moment? Well, will that be a real sincere repentance? Will that really be a sincere repentance? I think God will know the difference. I think he'll know the difference in the sincerity of our repentance. Now, you know how in the creed we pray, uh, we pray for um, one holy Catholic, or no, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be way back in the early church that, way back, that would, people would get baptized frequently for the forgiveness of sins. Frequently. So, yeah, they said, this, this isn't right. So the, our early church fathers, the Council of Nicaea, said, one bap you get baptized once and that'll forgive you your sins. Well, some people would say, okay, I'll wait till the moment of my death, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, and then I'll uh, I'll get baptized. Well, two people today died in a plane crash not far from here. Private plane going along happily, smoothly. Plane went down and crashed. Now, what if they had not been baptized and they were waiting for that last moment to repent? Well, I'm sure on the way down they didn't have time to get baptized. I I sure hope they had a prayer in their heart and they had properly repented long before. So we don't know when the end will come, either the end of the age or our own end, as uh, I think Ruthie Johnson pointed that out to us one evening. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, you're doing so good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour 
Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had tr- cried out with a loud voice, he said to the Father, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together in that sight, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Thank you. Now let's turn to John. John 19, verse 17. John 19, 17. Mm Mm-hmm. And again, we're going to see a few details that we did not get in the other Gospels. Okay. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore, the chief of priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from top and one woven from the top in one piece, and they said, therefore among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple with whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Well, just a moment. Now, Jesus mm-hmm. turns to John, behold your mother, and to Mary, behold your son. Now, if Mary had other children, that would not have been necessary. Mm-hmm. Would not have been necessary because the other children would have cared for their mother. But Mary was without child of her own except for Jesus. And so it was Jesus asking or telling John to care for Jesus' mother, Mary, as her own, as his own mother. Because there would be no social support for her otherwise. There's no secu- no social security, right. no uh, what are they social nets? Is that what they call it? Safety nets. Yeah, safety nets, exactly. Okay, okay. go ahead. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Thank you. So we have... um... Largely the same uh, throughout all four Gospels. And each evangelist is telling the story as it was related to him or as he saw it. As he saw it. We know that John was there for everything. The other apostles are pretty well scattered. And uh, we know that there were witnesses outside of St. John. There was... um, Mary Magdalene, there was Mary the wife of Clopas, there was Mary the wife of James the Lesser, etc. A lot of Marys. Why so many Marys? Well, Mary was a very common name. Um, It was a derivative of uh, uh, Moses' sister's name. So, 
at any rate. And um, so we have four stories. Pretty much we can fill in details from each of these stories, put them all together. We can a full comprehensive story. Now, people will say, well, why are they all different? Well, we have four different witnesses re relating the same story. So let's say that uh, Kurt, my good friend, my little buddy over there in Tennessee, standing on a street corner and he sees <clears throat> two cars crash. Okay, and the police come and say, uh, Kurt, you witnessed this. Tell us what happened. And Kurt will say, well, this car was coming down the road, and this one went through the stop sign, and the other car T-boned him. And uh, the policeman said, oh, good. Who was in the car? Well, there was, uh, it was a man driving and a woman next to him, and uh, I remember she had a hat on. Okay. Well, they come up to me, Steve. So what did you see, Steve? I happened to be standing in the same corner with Kurt. Well, I saw a car coming down the road, car go through the stop sign, T-bone. Okay. Who was in the car? Well, there was a man driving. He had a hat on. There was a woman there, and she had a, a print dress on, as I remember. I very, very clear, I could see it was a red print dress. And uh, looked like there was a child in the back seat. Well, some of our details don't exactly match up, but the policeman is starting to get a fuller, a fuller sense of what went on. And he might ask someone else, and they have different details about and throwing, bringing all these details together, seeing where they agree and disagree gives a fuller picture. And that's what we're doing here with these four evangelists, getting a fuller picture of what went on that day, at that time. You know, one tells us, or they tell us about the veil, but they don't all tell us about the veil being split. Uh, one tells us about, uh, John tells us about uh, his message to John, take Mary as your mother. Mary, take John as your, as your son. We don't hear that. We hear uh, Jesus, Father, uh, and one only one gospel. Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And only one of the gospels do we hear the, the repentance of the one criminal who was being crucified with them. Well, it All kind, of these, of, kind of appears that John might have been closer than some of the others. You no, know, he was right at the cross. Right. So he might have gotten a little right. of the details the other ones left out because right. of his proximity. And a lot of people say, you know, John's gospel is so different, so different from the other gospels. We have uh, the synoptic gospels. That means you're looking at the same events through a different eye, through a different lens. And, um, well, they all are looking for the same lens. These Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the synoptic gospels, they're looking at the same lens, the same eye. And that's why they're so similar. We call those the synoptic gospels. But John's gospel is written much later, much later. And he's read their guy. He's familiar with Mark. He's familiar with Luke and uh, Matthew's gospels. And he might have said, well, you know, they forgot to put this in. For example, uh, the wedding at Cana. No one mentions it except for John. The wedding at Cana, the turning of the water into wine. They forgot to put this in. So he puts it in his gospel. Or um, this, you know, he was there to witness what Jesus said on the cross to John and, and you know, to him and to Mary. Um, so much, so much. You know, we, we put them all together, we get a fuller story. That's important. That's important. And we really um, have the whole unity of the Gospels. There are four different stories about the same event. We put them together, and they mesh so nicely. Mesh so nicely. So, well, wow! Look what time it is. We're we're running really late this evening. So, um, I want to go around and see if there's any comments or. And nothing there. Or if we bored everyone to death. 
Ah, Laura, uh, Laura White's with us this evening. Good evening to you, Laura. And uh, yeah, let's see here. No, okay. Well, let's uh, let's close our Bibles. And uh, I think what we're going to do this evening, since it's so late, is we're going to dispense with the evening prayer itself, but do our prayer intentions. Sound good to you, Kurt? Yeah, Steve, that sounds good. Okay. Well, I'll be seeing you on the other side then. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night? Yes, sir. But we'll not see you Sunday night? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> good night. Okay. So, because it's so late, we'll put off our evening prayers, same yourselves this evening. But we are going to pray for our brothers and sisters. Dear Lord, we ask that you remember those that we are about to pray for this evening. Melita Green asked to pray for Miriam, her sister, who uh, suffers from an emotional problem. Dear Lord, we pray for her, that you heal her. Camilla Raymond asked to pray that she remains focused, diligent, and receives your guidance, dear Lord, as she receives an insight as she uh, readies her dissertation for her PhD. We uh, pray that, you, uh, that sh you continue to favor her teaching position at the university. We pray for her health and her children's health. And we pray for that two-year-old little boy and neighbor who's had so many uh, cranial surgeries, dear Lord, in his very short life. We pray for healing for him. Oana asked to pray for Tyler, who suffers from a brain tumor, dear Lord. We pray for healing for Tyler. Um, we, and we pray for Oana and her daughter Maria, that they have uh, peace and understanding between the two of them. Amen. We pray for that. Marley Freilich has to pray for Nancy. <coughs> she had surgery, dear Lord, and we pray that she's recovering and is home soon if she's not already home. We pray for a full recovery for her. And we pray for the Freilich family, that they be kept safe from the coronavirus. We pray for um, a family adopting three children from the war area of Russia and Ukraine. We pray for their success. We pray for Father Benjamin Henderson and his family. Father Benjamin is recovering from a heart attack and surgery. Joseph Khalil asks to pray for Toby, his son, that you give him guidance, dear Lord, and he receives that guidance. We pray for Luke, Joseph's son, that he be protected from all infections and that you uh, heal him of his current infection, dear Lord. And uh, Joseph also asked to pray for Annabelle and Gabriella, for Odette, his mother, who suffers from cancer, for Renea, his wife, who has health issues, Lord. We pray for healing for her. We pray for Joseph's entire family, and we pray for the health of Doug Fall. Jonathan Nichols asked to pray for his health, and we pray for him, and we give you thanks for all that you have done for Jonathan. Meredith Beckley asked to pray for Katie, Jake, and Addie. We pray for them, dear Lord, and we pray for the whole Beckley family. Brandy and Philip. Brandy and Philip asked to pray for uh, Tracy and George. And we pray for Brandy, dear Lord. Um, she suffers from a serious disease. She had a little bit of surgery. And uh, we pray that uh, we pray for healing for her and return to good health. We pray for Philip. Uh, Philip uh, is very worried and anxious about Brandy's uh, health problems, so we pray that you relieve his anxiety. We pray for Brandy's brother, Kevin. Kevin is, um, has made some poor uh, choices in his life, and we pray that he makes better choices in the future, dear Lord. We pray for Brandy and Kevin's father, who's recovering from a stroke, and the word is he's doing a lot better. He's in rehab, and he's doing much better. We thank you so much for that, dear Lord. Amen. And we pray for Brandy's project, establishing that Orthodox mission in, Ken in uh, Wyoming. Marianne Russell asked to pray for Kathy, for Violet, and for Louise, for her health. Colleen asked to pray for the health of Marie and her husband. And Phil Collins asked to pray for the health of Dee. Alioni asked to pray for Joanne, who suffers from cancer, Lord. We pray for healing for Joanne. We pray that um, Brandon finds work soon, Lord. And we pray for Lori, that she has peace in, our, in her family. And uh, you'll notice that we're praying for peace in uh, a couple of families 
And that's so important and so hard to achieve many times in this stressful world. We pray for peace in all of our families, dear Lord. Um, Christina Bennett asked to pray for the health of Corolla. Daniel Duran asked to pray for Gail, who's lost her husband, Victor. We pray for both of them. We pray for Rosemarie, who's passed away. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, Rosemarie and Victor have found eternal life with you. Catherine Salcedo asked to pray for Izio, that he grows up with faith in you, Lord. Mother Elizabeth asked to pray for Larissa, the Klippa family, for the health of John, for Father Theodorus, and for Heraclius Smith. And we pray for Mother Elizabeth's ministry down there in Flagler County, Florida. Amen. And Philip asked to pray for the health of Rosie. Marianne Russell asked to pray for Barbara, and Jeffrey, and Ann Hubiak. And Kathy Zansis asked to pray for Sophia, her daughter, and Anastasia, her mother, for their health. Debbie Owens asked to pray that there be less stress in uh, her life, less stress at work, less stress at home, and uh, that it, her family, um, we pray for their family, dear Lord, the whole family, especially Gio and Jordan. And we pray for them all. May they find peace in their home. Debbie also asked to pray for Yelena, who suffers from nerve damage, dear Lord. And we pray that uh, you relieve her pain and her dependence on her pain medications. Catherine Houston asked to pray for John, David, Brandon, her son, who just got married. We pray for Brandon and his new bride. And we pray for the health of Lexi, Catherine's daughter. We pray for Nicole, Nicholas, Tiffany, Gary, Rebecca, and Taylor, and Catherine, for health and relief from a rare eye condition and its symptoms, and for Sarah and her family. We pray for Nadine, for her health, Lord, and we thank you for the healing that you have given to Nadine. Uh, we pray for Patricia, Catherine's sister, for her health and relief from back pain. We pray for healing for Michelle, who has a reoccurrence of breast cancer. We pray for Donna. We pray for healing for Donna from brain cancer, Lord. We pray for Catherine's special intention as well. I ask that we pray for the health of my family, especially my granddaughter, Sarah, for my daughter, Maureen, and her family, that uh, they be protected from the coronavirus. We pray for the health of my wife, uh, Sharon. We pray for Michaela Reyes, that, who is suffering from stage four breast cancer. She's already had one surgery, She's going to have two more, and she's undergoing uh, chemotherapy as well. We pray for healing for her. Lena May asked to pray for her husband, and with your Lord, we pray for Lena May's health. She has health problems. We pray for healing for her and uh, relief from her suffering, and we pray for Lena May's special intention as well. Bernie Grant, who's back with us. Good to have you back, Bernie. Well, we pray for his health, dear Lord. And we pray for his family, especially his mother. We pray that Bernie gets back to work real soon and that everything goes smoothly for him when he does get back to work. Elder Millennial asks to pray for his family, his mother Celeste, his, uh, his niece, and his aunt who's passed away. And we pray that she has found eternal life with you. Karen Karlanovich asks to pray for her children and grandchildren, especially her daughter Jana, who's going to have surgery in October. We pray for successful surgery for her. We pray for uh, uh, Frances, who is Jana's daughter and Karen's granddaughter. We pray for her and we pray for that whole family that they find peace among themselves. Again, we pray for peace in our families. And we pray for Karen, who suffers from fibromyalgia, dear Lord. We pray that you relieve her pain and suffering. Amen. Millie asks to pray for her son, Andrew, that he comes to you with faith and love, dear Lord. And uh, we pray for the family of Linda Paxos. Joanne Manaski asked to pray for uh, her daughter, Aaron, and for Aaron's husband for their health, for Paul, her brother, for Corey, her son, and for the health of Cruz. Stephanie Acario asked to pray for her. Pray strong, she says, and we do. Paul Collins asked to pray for his special intention, for the health of his children, and for a supervisor at work suffering from cancer. Catherine Salcedo asked to pray for all of those with addictions, as she suffers from an addiction. Lord, so we pray for Catherine, we pray for her husband, and for Bianca and Rodrigo. We pray for the souls of Elizabeth Mercier and her husband Mark, who have passed away. We pray that they have found eternal life with you. Stefan Bennett 
asks to pray for all of our spiritual fathers worldwide guiding their flocks during this trying time. I pray for Father Gregory, my uh, priest uh, at St. Michael's. Uh, we pray for uh, Father Wade Fonestock and his ministry down there in Florida and for his family that they're protected from the coronavirus. And we pray that Brandon receives your guidance, Lord. We pray for Father Constantinos and his ministry. Uh, he is the director of the St. Irene Orthodox Orphanage and uh, Mission in Kenya. We pray for Father Antipas and his ministry in Nairobi. And uh, we pray that he can reestablish his school, dear Lord. He can reestablish his school. And uh, we pray for that. Tragedy. And we pray, dear Lord, for his family, especially Gloria, who's starting her university studies. We pray for Father Demetrios, and we pray for Father Emmanuel also in uh, Kenya. We pray for him. And Stefan asked to pray for all of the sick, not only those who are sick physically, but those who are sick uh, spiritually. And he asked the Lord's mercy on all of us sinners. Amen. David Sauls asks us to continue to pray for his mother, Irene, who is recovering for, um, from her infection. David George asks to pray for Kathy Mater, his mother-in-law. She's passed away. We pray that she has found eternal life with you. Anna Gennaro asks to pray for the health of Catherine. We pray for Anna's brother, Joseph, and for her son-in-law, Daniel, that he has an increase in faith and uh, that he brings his family into faith with him. Uh, we pray for uh, a fellow parishioner of Anna's, John. He suffers from cancer. We pray for healing for John. We pray for Rosemary, who's passed away, that she finds eternal rest with you, Lord. And Anna has a special intention. And we pray that Anna uh, can find suitable housing and affordable housing in Washington so she can go there and be with her family. Joe Barbera asked to pray for uh, Janice and Jean, his, his sister and brother-in-law, and for Bud and Loretta, his brother and sister-in-law. Stuart Jones asked to pray for his health and the health of his mother and brother. David Fox asked to pray for Daniel and his family and for Damien and his wife. And we pray for the health of Aunt Sylvia, dear Lord. We pray for her. We pray for Anne, who has passed away. We pray for that she has found eternal life with you. We pray for David, that he recovers um, from his broken foot. And God willing, he won't need any surgery later on. And that's the fear. Wilson Salviejo asked to pray for him for his mother, Gregoria, for his brother, Donald, for his nephews, Ken and Kyer, for his sister-in-law, Rochelle, for his Aunt Rose, and for his mother's caregiver, Stella, that they be protected, that you protect them, Lord, from all harm and sickness, especially the coronavirus. Stefan Bennett asked to pray for our children, his children, Christy, Kara, Justin, Kayla, and Warren, and for his wife, Kendra. And we thank you that uh, Stefan and all his travels lately has been brought home safely. Stacy Bellis asked to pray for the health of Amy, for uh, Stacy's husband, Brian, and for their children, Yanni, Kiriakos, Anastasia, Yakovos, and Mihalis. And we pray for the health of Stacy's brother-in-law. Jay Russell asked to pray for the health of Tim and Debbie Moses, for Mia Wagner, for Arabella Wagner-Rawlings, for little Jackson, that he remains cancer-free, Lord, for Tom Gall, and for Jim Jackson and Carl Johnson. They're suffering from cancer, and we pray for healing for them, and we pray for John Etcher. We pray for Clara Routing, dear Lord, who suffers also from cancer. We pray that you heal her, that you relieve her suffering and uh, pain and agony. And uh, we pray, dear Lord, that uh, you relieve her anxiety as well, and that uh, she gets that surgery that she so badly needs. Elena Sheldahl asks to pray that she continues to trust in our Lord. Alioni asks to pray for her husband and children. And Deborah asks to pray for her grandchildren, especially Tatiana. And uh, for Kristen, who suffers from thyroid cancer. And we pray for a loved one of Deborah's who has an addiction. And we pray, dear Lord, for relief from that addiction. Amen. And we pray for Deborah. Katerina Pappas asks to pray for Thomas, her husband. Maria Kukadakis for her grandson. Alita Hagos asks to pray for the health of Manal, and we pray for Alita's children as well. Rob King asks to pray for his children and grandchildren, that they come to you in faith, dear Lord, 
and we pray for Rob's two sisters, Dixie and Virginia. We pray that Dixie, through our prayers and your healing power, Lord, um, finds relief and uh, from that addiction of hers. Michael and Kelly Hatton ask to pray for their health and the health of their daughter. Art James asks to pray for his health. Lori Miller asks to pray for David, who's our cousin who suffers from cancer. We pray for healing for David, and we pray, dear Lord, that uh, you relieve David's pain and suffering. We pray for Jessica, who suffers from kidney failure, Lord, and we thank you for Lori's new job. Strevel Lebatskos asks to pray for the health of Marie, and things are really getting better for Marie, and we thank you for that. We prayed so long for her. And we pray for Simeon, uh, Stravula's father-in-law. Um, the doctor said he's going to lose weight. He has cancer, you know. Well, the doctor said he's going to lose weight. Well, he hasn't. He's gained weight. A good thing. He's getting stronger. Thank you, Lord. Connie Devados has to pray for her children and grandchildren, that they return to the Orthodox faith and get closer to you. We pray for the health of Evangelina. We pray for healing for Jeff, Gigi, Kathy, and Jeannie. And we pray for Annie. We ask for a miracle healing for Jeannie, or Annie, dear Lord. Excuse me. We pray for a miracle healing for Annie, dear Lord. And Connie also asks to pray for our members of our armed forces and our first responders and for her special intention. Nellie Cardvelli asks to pray for Cotney. And we pray for Terry, who's passed away, dear Lord. We pray that she has found, that Terry has found eternal life with you. We pray for Nellie that you heal her eyes, dear Lord. We pray for that and restore her vision. Amen. We pray for Stelio, that you protect him and keep him safe while at work. We pray, dear Lord, that you relieve his uh, stress, his worry, and his anxiety. And we pray for his special intention. And we pray for his friend, Sultana, my friend. And we pray for Sultana's father, who's just getting out of the hospital. Uh, we pray for full recovery for him, dear Lord. Amen. And we pray that uh, Sultana and her father both come to you in faith. Amen. Luana asks to pray for Aunt Benita's health, for uh, James Grass, for the health of her mother. She suffers from cancer. And we pray for Luana, that you protect her and keep her safe, dear Lord. She works in a tough part of town, and uh, we pray for her protection and safety. Colleen asks to pray for the health of Clay, for Sheila and Stephanie, and for a special intention. David Sauls asks to pray for the Aid and El Assad families, and for Shaz and Zephrin, all of whom are in Lebanon and in Syria. We pray for their protection. We pray once again for Father Antipas. We pray for the health of Father Nagala, or Dr. Nagala. We pray for the health of Maria Shalakova, and for Fatima Muhammad. Christopher Bundros asks to pray for... Uh, his family, Shirley, Christopher, Joseph, Matthew, and Faith. We pray for all of our families that they all stay strong in their faith for you, Lord. And we pray for the health of John, Liza, John, Carrie, Gibran, Annabelle, and Gregory. And we pray for Maura, who suffers from cancer, dear Lord. We pray for her, for healing for Maura. We pray for Michael, Michael, Gabrielle, Andrew, Joanna, Zoe, and Anthony. We pray that they come closer to the church and closer to you. We pray for the health of Sony, that you protect her from the virus. We pray for Marcia, dear Lord, who suffers from cancer. We pray that you heal her through the uh, chemotherapy treatments she's getting. We thank you for her husband and for her two daughters who care for her. We pray that they can find a uh, another uh, skilled um, aid to help uh, Marcia at home. And uh, we pray for Marcia's son and family down in Arizona as well. Kurt Lytle asks to pray for the health of Betty Baird. And uh, we pray for Kurt's daughters, Kristen, Rachel, and Nicole. And uh, we pray for, uh, for their health and protection. We pray for the health of Gail. Uh, we pray for Jane, Father Benedict, for the monks of the Holy Cross Monastery, for Christina and Jakarta and her family, for Coach Josh Harris, and for once again, for Father Emmanuel, Albert Brassard asks to pray for his health. He suffers from a uh, diabetic uh, ulcer on his foot. And we pray, dear Lord, for healing for that. And as far as I know, he's still in the hospital, so we pray for him. We, Albert also asks to pray for David, who suffers from pancreatic cancer. 
We pray for David's uh, wife and son, Sharon and Joshua, that they remain strong through this trying time in their lives. We pray for Mary, who suffers from dementia, and we pray for Joseph and his health. Robert Ryan asks to pray for Kathy Sanders and Kathy Kovac, both of whom are suffering from cancer. We pray for the health of Marie Cassidy. We pray for Bridget and her daughter, that her daughter makes better choices in her life and that you relieve Bridget's anxiety and worry. We pray for those who have thoughts of loneliness and anxiety. We pray especially strong for Robert Ryan, dear Lord. And we pray for Bob Payne, who has kidney failure. And we pray for Bob's wife, Penny. And we pray for Leo Fox, who's recovering from a stroke. We pray for a full recovery for him. Bessie Carnos asked to pray for her mother, Effie, as she recovers from being in the hospital with a serious heart condition, Lord. And it appears that you're uh, healing her through her medications. And we thank you for that. And we pray that that uh, defibrillator will be put into place soon. Darlene Ann asked to pray for Jordan and Felicia and Felicia's unborn son. We pray for them and for him, dear Lord. Vicki Winter asked to pray for the health of her parents, Martha and Jimmy. We pray that Martha, you relieve Martha's of her pain and that she will not need that uh, surgery on her hip. We pray for Vicki's husband, Earl, and for his business. We pray for Jane Robbins and her health. We pray for the health of Vicki, who's recovering from a broken arm. Earl Winter, Vicki's husband, asked to pray for Drew, who suffers from brain cancer, Lord, and we pray for a healing for uh, Drew. Stacy Ioano asked to pray for her sister, Bonita, who has an addiction. We pray for her. We pray for Stacy's other sister, Barbara, and her family. We pray for Kathleen, Stacy, Bonita, and Barbara's mother. We pray, dear Lord, that you heal, and it looks like you're doing a pretty good job, Lord, of healing her lungs. Kathleen has lung problems. And uh, the doctor said she will never be able to walk around the, around the block. Never. Well, she's doing nine kilometers a day right now, Lord. Well, I guess the doctors hadn't figured on you. Amen. And we pray for Kathleen's husband, Dennis. Ruthie Johnson asked to pray for her family, especially Katie and her children, small children. We pray for the health of uh, Ruthie's husband and her brother, Jim. We pray for Michael, that he has an increase in faith. We pray for Philip, that he's able to overcome his addiction through our prayers and your healing power, Lord. We pray for Tricia, Ruthie's niece. We pray for her and her family, uh, Matthew and Kevin. Christina Hunter asked to pray for her parents, Tamara and Doranelle. And we pray especially for her mother, dear Lord, who has the thyroid and gallbladder uh, issues. We pray for healing for her. And Robert Edwards asked to pray for him as he recovers from a stroke. And we pray that you restore his left hand and left arm. Uh, as he's lost both uh, use of both his left hand and left arm because of the stroke. We pray that you restore them, dear Lord. We pray for Alexander Mihalichenko and his brothers Serge and Nicholas. And we pray for Noah, for the health of Noah. And we pray for Nadezhda Nikolaevna, who's passed away. We pray that she has found eternal life with you. And Joseph Worth asks us to pray for his brother, Daniel. Amen. Okay, let's see if there's any other prayer requests. J. Russell, Lord, have mercy on us all. Fill us with your love and peace, that we may share your love with everyone. Amen. Sanella Salico is with us. Good evening, Sanella. Lena May says, good night, everybody. Karen Karlanovich says, good evening, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Ruthie Johnson, please pray for the unborn and for an end to abortion. Amen. We pray right along with Ruthie, dear Lord, for an end to abortion. It looks like you're going to have to do the job, Lord, because we're doing a pitiful job of it down here. Amen. And Jay Russell, special prayers for Brandy that God heals her from lupus 
and relieve her, relieves her pain, suffering, stress, and anxiety. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And over here, Jonathan says, I'm really late. I'll rewind and watch again. Have a blessed evening. And over here, no, okay. Well, dear Lord, we ask that you remember all of those that we have prayed for this evening. We ask that you extend your healing hand on all those who are suffering, either from physical, emotional, or uh, spiritual problems. We ask you for your healing, your grace, and your love as we give you our love. And we pray that the Most Holy Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, adds our prayers and intentions to her prayers when she prays. And we pray, dear Lord, um, that our, our martyrs, our saints of the day, Cyprian and Justina, add our prayers and intentions to their prayers when they pray. Amen. O Holy Father, Heavenly Physician of our souls and bodies, who has sent your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to heal all our ailments and deliver us from death, visit and heal your servants, granting them release from pain and restoration to health and vigor, that they may give thanks unto you and bless your holy name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Well, my friends, I'll see you again tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time here in the U.S. for morning prayers, and then at 9 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States for the Gospel Minute Live, where we'll have scripture readings and Bible studies and lots of prayers. And uh, tomorrow we'll go on with uh, the crucifixion, part two of the crucifixion. So, well, until all then, all that time, all that, till then, till then. Remember two things. God loves you and I love you. And may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto